So this question is looking at what happens when an external electron with kinetic energy of 2.0 times 10 to the minus 18 joules collides with an electron sat in the ground state of my atom. And the first part of the question just wants us to work out what the speed of our external electron is before it collides. Well, we have an energy, a kinetic energy, and we know that E equals a half mv squared. Now we want to find the velocity, so we need to rearrange this equation. If I multiply both sides by 2, that gets rid of the half there. So v squared is equal to 2, that gets rid of the half, takes it over there, times the e, and on this side I've multiplied by m, so if I divide both sides by m, that leaves me with v squared, therefore v is equal to the square root of 2e over m. Now I just need to plug my equations, uh, uh, my uh, numbers in. E is 2 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. The mass of an electron is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And so when I plug those numbers into this equation, I get a velocity of 2.1 times 10 to the 6. And of course it's a velocity, so it's meters per second, ms to the minus 1. Now the next part of the question wants us to show that that electron, when it impacts with the ground state electron, could excite it to level 2. Well, if we go back up here to our diagram, we're basically saying that here I have my ground state electron, here I have my external electron, which comes whizzing in and it has a kinetic energy of 2.0 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. And we have to show that that's got enough energy to excite the electron all the way up to the level 2. So what we need to do is have a look at the difference in energy here and see whether that's less than or equal to the energy of my instant electron. Well, the change in energy is just the highest energy level minus the lowest energy level, which in this case here is equal to minus 2.42 times 10 to the minus 19 joules minus the lowest energy level, which is our ground state at minus 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Now when I do this equation, I end up getting a difference in energy of being 1.94 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Now if I compare that to the energy of my incident electron, it is less than the kinetic energy of the electron, therefore it will excite 2n equals 2. Now let's have a look at the next part. Here we say that it wants us to work out what the wavelength of radiation will be when an atom in E2, in level 2, falls to level 1 and state the region that it will belong in. Well, again I need to find first of all my change in energy because for an electron transitioning down from the second 
to the first energy level, it does that by giving out a photon of light. And the energy of that photon, which is equal to HF, which is equal to HC over lambda, and I'm using that equation because the question is asking us for the wavelength, is also equal to the highest energy level minus the lower energy level, and that is equal to minus 2.42 times 10 to the minus 19 minus minus 5.48 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So that's my higher energy level minus my lower energy level. When I type those in, I find that HC over lambda is equal to 3.06 times 10 to the minus 19. Now all I need to do is rearrange this to find lambda and it works out that lambda when I rearrange that equation is equal to hc over my energy there, my 3 point oh six times ten to the minus nineteen and when I put my h of six point six three times ten to the minus thirty four and my c speed of light of three times ten to the eight into that equation I end up getting a lambda of six point five times ten to the minus seven. Now because it's of the order of 10 to the minus 7, and I know that visible light is 4 to 7 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, I know that that photon there is going to fall within visible. Final part of the question, calculate the minimum potential difference through which an electron must be accelerated from rest in order to be able to ionise an atom in its ground state with the above energy level structure. Now this is a little bit tricky because the first thing we need to do is work out what energy we would need to ionise it. And so in order to be able to ionise it we'd have to be able to go all the way from E0 up to E equals naught, our ionization level. Well, if E is equal to naught, the energy that we need to ionize is going to be naught minus minus 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18, which is just 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. That is the energy required to ionize our atom. Now what we need to do is figure out what the minimum potential difference through which it must be accelerated. Now remember the definition of an electron volt is the energy that an electron has when accelerated through one volt. So what we need to do is convert this from joules into electron volts. Well, in order to convert from joules to electron volts, I take my 21, 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules, and I have to divide that by the charge of an electron. So I divide that by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And that is because 1 eV is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So to convert from joules to eV, I have to divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. 
That gives me an EV of 13.6. So that means an electron would need to be accelerated through a voltage of 13.6 volts in order to get an energy of 13.6 electron volts. So my voltage is just 13.6 volts.